when they're looking to dispose yeah. of their machines is, mm-hmm. first of all, do not wait the last moment because uh, when you need to disconnect the machine, the value drop immediately. So as you are planning to dispose of it or you're planning to replace it with a new one, mm-hmm. inform uh, possibly us at an earlier stage because we can try to maximize uh, the value of your equipment. At the end, when it's too late, uh, you are disconnecting it. The moment you take out the electricity, the value drops. Of course, uh, you, you are in a hurry to, to take it out of the building and, I mean, by any reason, yeah. the value decreases. So think about it on time and uh, this will be beneficial for you guys, mainly. Welcome to Verify in Field, the Millwork podcast. Your host, Jacob Edmund, CEO of Duckworks, will be interviewing experts in the industry to bring you insights and knowledge about the latest trends, techniques, and challenges in millwork. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, this podcast is for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the world of millwork. Here's Jacob. Uh, Diego Piersanti, is that how you pronounce it? Did I say that right? Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about um, his background in the industry, talking a little bit about firwood and just the millwork industry in general, what they do there. So thanks for joining me today, Diego. That's a pleasure. Thanks for having me here. Just share a little bit about your background, how you got to firwood, you know, how you got into the millwork in, in the machinery and industry. Well, it's a long story, and uh, uh, I started uh, a long time ago in the machinery industry, as my dad uh, had a company that was manufacturing uh, glass and stone working machinery. So as a kid, uh, I was running around and uh, trying to manufacture pieces, then assemble the parts, and then uh, the passion for machinery started there. However... Uh, I was born in Pesaro and is uh, the city where one of the biggest companies involved in woodworking uh, machinery is based. 50 kilometers from there, there is another uh, of the biggest group worldwide on the woodworking machinery. So it was an easy path to, to join, this, let's say, this, uh, this kind of field. Uh, I've been growing with them both. And uh, it's been a great experience. I appreciate the opportunity that uh, they've given me in uh, in different ways. And uh, here started the path. So at the beginning as a CNC specialist, so more involved on the technical side of the of the business, specializing in uh, in CNC and drilling. And after that, moving toward the more more sales oriented. Uh, profession, uh, moving to Dubai to set up a brand for one of those companies. After three, four years, moving to the UK as a key account manager for the same group. And then uh, I got in touch with Fairwood. That uh, was a, was a kind of a experience because uh, when I visited the factory, Actually, uh, I was expecting uh, some buildings uh, full of scrap. Actually, I was selling the new, so I was not expecting uh, much from a used uh, machinery company. And, uh, well, when I opened the door, I got the wow effect. (laughs) That was really revealing. I've seen a showroom that was uh, at the same level of uh, new machinery manufacturer showrooms. So the, really the machines look really new beside that uh, eventually old colors that I was able to recognize. But the machine looks really, I mean, are, are these used machines for real? And then they explained to me all the process that they go through to, to recondition them to that level. There was this opportunity. So you worked for a traditional machinery uh, manufacturer, and then you came to Furwood, uh, which is where you're now, right? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, there was this opportunity in the US for Fairwood. And uh, a joke that I used to say is that after the United Arab Emirates, where I started, the United Kingdom, 
was missing just the big United, the United States. <laughs> so absolutely. And uh, I, I thought that, okay, this is a company that has a, a big future over there. And uh, I'm pleased to, to start from, uh, from the beginning, let's say. So you, you were working with Fairwood in the UK and then you took an opportunity with Fairwood in the US. No, in the in the UK, sorry, in the UK, I was still with the, uh, one of the manufacturers. I joined Fairwood to move to the US. Okay, and was Fairwood already established in the US market at that point? Uh, well, let's say that uh, I started a few years back uh, with uh, a small team. Then uh, COVID hit, so let's say that the the business plan. Uh, was in a hold for a while. And now that the business is moving quite fast, uh, they decided to reinforce the team, adding me and uh, as a key account manager and West Coast manager. Could you share with our listeners who maybe aren't familiar an overview of Fairwood? Like what are the services that Fairwood provides or the products it offers or offers to millwork manufacturers? Yeah, absolutely. Fairwood is a company uh, based in uh, in Italy. It's a family-owned company where the family is absolutely active on uh, on the business every day, and uh, uh, we deal in uh, used machinery. Uh, we'd like to say that we can offer a white glove services for woodworking used woodworking machinery because we try to provide. Uh, uh, Let's say a premium, a premium experience to our customer. Either they are in need of selling or dispose of their machinery, or if they want to buy uh, a used pre-owned machinery. Uh, Fairwood actually is uh, one of the biggest companies in this sector in Europe. is absolutely well known and does business with uh, uh, customers starting from the small workshop up to the big corporate. And the same we're starting to do here in uh, in the US. Actually, we started a while ago, but now we want to be uh, more involved with uh, those companies and those customers. Why we differentiate from the others? Because we are flexible in providing our customers uh, with different solutions, starting from as is machinery, we buy and resell as they are. And this is something that usually auctions offer this kind of possibility but we want to go a step uh, further offering the customer machines that are uh, fully reconditioned meaning that uh, we strip them down up to the basement we repaint them uh, we replace all the broken of course components uh, but as well the component that may be weird but still in good condition we want to change them we do the testing, we do the factory acceptance test for the customer that want to go with our Fairwood approved machinery. We provide installation, training to the operators, site acceptance test, and then an additional six month warranty on used machinery. So this brings us quite close to the new machinery sales process where, of course, we provide machinery that are uh, like out of the factory, of course, a few years back. In some cases, we also uh, upgrade machinery. So sometimes uh, we can bring the uh, OS system to most recent level. Let's say when uh, they're no more supported by the OEM, uh, we can upgrade the, the system. Uh, we can modify the machine for them, for the customer, based on their need. Of course, there is a technical feasibility study. If it's feasible, we need to evaluate with the customer if it is viable. And if it is, everyone's happy, we move on and we provide really a white glove service for used woodworking machinery. Okay. So... You're a partner for companies that are both looking to offload existing machinery, yeah. upgrade, or buy 
new to them existing machinery, do you partner in in all of those types of transactions, as well as you sell refurbished machinery or just as it sits, hey, here's a machine that somebody has to sell and you place it with somebody who's going to buy it. Yeah. Does that sound right? Exactly. So if a customer is looking to dispose of something, either he is in a rush because he wants to free a building or he has a nice piece of kit and he wants to maximize uh, the the sale uh, value of the machinery, mm -hmm. uh, we are able to support them, suggest them, and uh, of course, uh, sometimes uh, just address them to which is the best solution to do so. And so you mentioned when you first went to Furwood to see the opportunity, you were surprised, like you expected to see scraps and things. I think I imagine that was you know, you come from one of the traditional manufacturers of machines. And so I imagine before your perception was, oh, they just sell old stuff, right? Yeah, that's correct. And that was not the case, I assume. Do you find that also surprises customers when they find out? What you guys <laughs> yes, <do>? massively. <laughs> I, I can say that because uh, really what we're trying to do is to bring our customer to see what happens over there because... Mm -hmm. It's difficult, especially for an American audience to, to move to Italy to see a factory that uh, refurbished used machinery because sometimes you see, okay, it doesn't worth the investment. Well, we want them to go because really you get a, a perception which is completely different and you get this credibility, this trust that, uh, I mean, blow your mind. I've been blown. <laughs> And I'm in the field for a while now. Yeah. And also you guys partner with the traditional manufacturers to some extent, right? Correct. Like you guys, you, it's not that you guys are like aftermarket or non-approved. You, you have relationships with styles and SCM and the traditional manufacturers. It sounds like, right? That's correct. I mean, we are absolutely friends with the, all of them. Because sometimes when they need to sell and uh, manufacturer usually don't buy back uh, used machinery because there are a lot of implications. Yeah. Of course, they need someone that can uh, serve their customer well. And uh, they involved us because uh, really we like to partnering either with machinery manufacturers that are in need to sell, partnering with the customer that are in need either to buy or sell. So we try to really to take care of people, not just being uh, throwing a machine inside the factory and uh, run away. Right. And very, awesome. very important uh, being the company family owned and the family is involved in the day by day operations. Uh, yeah. They understand very well what the customers are looking for and uh, they want to keep their reputation high. Yeah. So, you know, as far as how you help millwork manufacturers how furwood does obviously i think at the end of the day there's some cost savings to you guys are working with clients and i imagine working with what what are their needs what is their budget and how can we find the right solution for them as well as you know as you mentioned the, the white glove service a lot of companies if they're not buying directly from a styles or an scm or a bsa they're trying to save money they're having to do a lot of work themselves and research and find a machine that maybe they can't have access to. And so also the service you guys are providing is that white glove experience. Hey, we will go find the machine for you. We will make sure that it is refurbished. It is the quality you need. It's working and we will install it. We will train. It's a full service for specifically what they need. Does that, does that sound correct? Yeah. Absolutely, that's that's the part of the job. We we like to to think about a consultative approach. So trying to understand the needs of the customer, see if anything in our stock uh, uh, may match their need, and uh, if not, uh, we are in search for the machinery. So we have a lot of connections, and uh, we know customer that maybe in in doubt we sell, we do not. So we try to coordinate and uh, make one customer happy 
able to sell the machine with, uh, uh, let's say, some more value on it because there is not a customer that is appreciating this configuration, this age, or this kind of equipment. So we support them on the brand uh, if they like one or another. And uh, again, uh, when you buy from us, uh, you know that someone had a look at it and uh, the configuration uh, seems right. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes it's not just about the price, which is a component of uh, a negotiation, but sometimes it's about uh, how fast can you get a machine or a line, because we sell also lines or batch one sells. I mean, we move far above the standalone machine. So, um... Shifting gears a little bit, you know, you have experience now in Europe and North America, but the customer bases and millware. What are some key differences that you've observed between those two markets within millwork? Well, the first one that impressed me was the scale of some businesses in the U.S. Of course, mm -hmm. we have big companies uh, and big groups uh, also in Europe, but the scale that is being reached in the U.S. is far above that. I mean, it's not common to find companies with in Europe with uh, 20 or 25 manufacturing plants <laughs> in the country. So the scale was kind of uh, surprising. And uh, this is really interesting. And then, of course, having a so big country and uh, so massive uh, potential for customers for meal work, mm -hmm. You can see also there is a lot of uh, difference starting from the small shop that does very high uh, bespoke uh, products, mainly in solid wood, to the big corporate that is working on uh, uh, more uh, minimalistic design in, uh, in furniture, let's say. While the focus in Europe still remain on... Um, a minimalistic design that's the say the the area where they're moving because it's uh, fast to produce it's uh, appreciated by the public and uh, let's say that there is less involvement of solid wood uh, because it's uh, it's more expensive it's more uh, difficult to manage and it requires uh, it's a labor intensive product Right. And, uh, you know, to create efficiency and competitivity, uh, they're always trying to reduce the labor cost. So in Europe, there's a lot more panel processing, sheet goods processing, and less hardwoods? Yeah, mainly yes. Let's say, just to give you an example, sometimes uh, you see some offices here in the U.S. that are beautifully crafted with a lot of dark, uh, solid wood yeah. and uh, this is something I've never seen in Europe <laughs> oh, I mean everything right. is kind of really minimalistic and uh, yeah. I mean high quality beautiful design but it's just something really different interesting uh, do you find that the size of like the distance like, US covers a lot more land <laughs> And so regionally, like this is something I think a lot of Europeans don't that haven't been to the U.S. maybe don't understand. And also the U.S. people haven't been to Europe. Like you've got the U.K., right, which is kind of self-contained and there's it's a huge market, but you can drive top to bottom. Right. Easy. And then obviously Europe is big, but it's a lot of countries and kind of in the U S it's almost like the States are more like different countries in the U S to some extent or in Europe. Right. So I think that's something that people don't realize to me, it changes the way the industry works in the U S it's very regional. Like there's people that operate, their customers are all around where they are and not the whole country. There's some that do the whole U S but also those big companies, like you mentioned, you were surprised at the scale of some of them. I mean, there are some companies that serve the whole U.S. They ship products all over, right? Yeah. And that includes just logistics different. So, like, do you get into shipping machinery and 
that type of stuff? Yes, we do. Like wrappers? We do. Um, is that different? Of course, yes, it's different. It's, uh, it's a challenge. But I would say that uh, customers in the U.S. Uh, are used to get machinery from far away. Mm -hmm. So they are used to time and cost related to, to logistics. Uh, another service that eventually we like to provide is to try to find something close by. If it is, let's say, right. in good condition or uh, uh, looking for an Aziz, uh, this is a little help that uh, we try to bring for customers that are looking in to sell and to buy. Is that harder to do in the U.S. than in Europe? Well, uh, I would say so because in Europe, moving a machine from uh, a country to another is pretty cheap, is pretty fast and uh, easy job. Uh, of course, there are uh, not customs and uh, I mean, yeah, not a big pond in the middle, <laughs> let's say. Right. But uh, yes, that's a kind of, uh, it's an additional challenge to, to the job, but... In, so in the U.S., almost everything is probably, well, one, it's having to come over on a ship if it's coming from Italy or Europe. But also within the U.S., you're probably, everything is on a truck. Yeah. In Europe, do you do you put things on trains a lot or is it also on trucks? Uh, everything is on truck. Okay. It's so easy, so, so that close that. Say, yeah, it, it's not a big cost. No, absolutely. So, but are customers in the in Europe less patient? Like they expect you to find something nearby and faster than in the U.S.? Uh, nearby, everything is nearby in Europe compared to the U.S. So uh -huh. that is, is not, uh, it's not a massive uh, implication. But uh, yeah. yeah, one of the things that customer that never dealt with used machinery don't get is the speed. Right. Meaning that uh, when we have a machine, it's a single piece. It's unique uh, in his age, in his condition, is his... Uh, place and uh, right. when you're looking to deal with used machine uh, you have to be ready to buy there is no like okay right. we ask for a price and then we'll see in uh, in a month in a month that machine <laughs> would have gone right and so in that sense you're kind of more like a broker like you may have clients that say i'm looking for this when you find it and then the opportunity might pop up and now you call them back uh, well, not exactly as a, as a broker, but uh, uh, of course we try to, uh, let's say, coordinate the sale for, for a fee. Of course, we, right. we are on the market for, for a profit. We are, <laughs> we are a company that needs uh, to survive. Right. And uh, usually we, we buy and resell so that uh, even the buyer knows in the middle there is a reputable company is not buying from an unknown somewhere company which may be mm -hmm. as reputable as uh, as we are nothing to say but who are these people i'm ju just buying a machine one time and i have no idea and the same is for the seller so we're not trying to just brokerage this is uh, another thing but uh, we try to be in the middle to guarantee both parties that someone serious has vetted one side and the other I guess, are there times where a used machine, somebody will call you and say, hey, I want to sell this. And right away, you think of a customer that might be a good fit for it that you've. And so you're able to call them and say, hey, I have this available. Is this something you're interested in? Yeah, that's by part of being uh, being proactive. And uh, yeah. we usually do, do that, especially with customer that, uh, uh, let's say, somehow are involved with us. Uh, are buying from us and uh, we try to be proactive because uh, we can bring them a service. They may not be interested, fair enough, but if there right. is an opportunity, it's a good machine, we've seen it, uh, it's working well and uh, you may get it yeah. at, at a fraction of the price uh, of a new one. So, as Once you've established relationships with clients, you're able to better match them with new opportunities when they come up, I imagine. Definitely. This is important for us to, to visit them, to, to get information from them. And uh, I mean, this just helps us to help them. Yeah. That's the partnership uh, I imagine that's a, side a, of the... A lot of, 
a lot of the value once people start working with you is is that future opportunities. Absolutely. Um, so what are some unique challenges or opportunities you've found while working, you know, with at Furward in the US? Um, like what are some things that you've learned over the years? Well, as a challenge is you got it straight away the first logistics. <laughs> Yeah. Especially for someone moving yeah. from uh, from Europe was just whoa, <laughs> something that yeah. uh, is a is a challenge definitely. Uh, the other side is dealing with customer that uh, may have not been used to deal with used machinery, so they think that they can get uh, let's say a price that we are happy to provide, and wait uh, right. a month and say ah yes uh, we can move forward. I'm sorry, that machine is gone. And uh, I mean, it's not just uh, I can place another one in production. We cannot manufacture right. used machines. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to start so the discussion like said, again. Right, and find another one. Yeah. And uh, this, of course, uh, is uh, something that we want to educate or bring knowledge to the customer that are approaching for the first time this kind of business. Well, we have some others that are arriving. I need this. You have it? Yes. Okay. That's the money. This is the machine. Deal done. Right. It's a, it's a different approach, but of course it comes with experience and, uh, and trust. Um, are there any like notable success stories or things that you found that is unique to you guys' business model? Well, uh, yes, uh, I can say that... Uh, uh, of course, I cannot name names, but uh, right. we are working with uh, some of the biggest corporate in the U.S. So uh, they are looking to us when they need a quick delivery or some machinery to replace uh, in some department. And we're talking uh, also big machinery. Right. And uh, as well, one company bought six uh, full automated lines from us. So loading, double-sided uh, combi machines, drilling machines all together, all singing and dancing. And uh, I mean, this is uh, this makes us proud. So yeah. our CEO was uh, uh, involved in uh, in the deal, and uh, he has a lot of experience. So was able to to finalize it. Customer happy, we are happy, and. Uh, I mean, this is the, the level where we want to work. I mean, we, we don't want to, yeah. to manage, uh, let's say, very small manual machine. It's not, uh, it's not our specialty. It's not our business. But mm -hmm. when you go to, to a certain level, yeah, then uh, we, are, we are very strong. As well, we help the small companies to move to their first level of automation. So, of course, they were a little bit scared of... Uh, the investment for new equipment moving already a step that was caring for them the investment was an additional uh, worry so we were able to provide uh, an automated solution with a reasonable price and they moved to this uh, next level for them they're happy moving forward and uh, now <laughs> we are a partner for those for the customer awesome and I imagine you have many customers that you help them get to a new level and then they come back and you help them again increase, right? Or grow and up upgrade. Because yeah. um, I imagine that happens a lot. Like you said, smaller shops, maybe they're introducing their first automation. And then once they get used to that, now they need to grow again and they come back for more. Yeah. Again, uh, sometimes, uh, you know... Uh... Companies that sell new machinery may fit 100% uh, the need of the customer. Uh, yeah. Of course, that uh, comes at a price and uh, a delivery time. Yeah. And uh, some customers, they need that and uh, they have to go with that. Uh, some customers are really able uh, to compromise a little bit on the technical aspect, uh, mm -hmm. save some money, get a quick delivery, and that where we fit. Right. Awesome. Um, 
So uh, is there anything that, um, you know, you and I met, we were at, at one of the, the spring leadership conference. I know you're very involved in, in some of the industry conferences and things. Um, and you also mentioned that you like to get customers to Italy if they can to see your operations. What does that look like for somebody that maybe is interested in doing that? Do they obviously travel over there and they, do you guys have that people regularly doing that? Do you have a process for that? Yes, uh, absolutely. We do that. Uh, of course, uh, uh, most of the customers that are visiting us are going to Italy to visit the new machinery manufacturer or for all the businesses. And of course, they mm-hmm. just get in touch with us and say, listen, I'm in Italy. I would like to pop in and we're happy. We are, we have always someone there uh, to welcome them, uh, to let them enjoy some uh, fantastic Italian food. The area is amazing for meat and wine. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, this is an occasion. Uh, I suggest everyone that is going to Europe or to Italy for, for a visit to, for a business visit, of course. Yeah. We are happy to welcome them. Just give us a shout a little bit earlier in order to to arrange something. Traveling is uh, pretty easy. Okay, the, the travel is not short, that uh, I can say, but it's pretty easy to move uh, uh, to Italy. Is just flying to Milan and uh, or uh, some German places, Frankfurt or Munich. Yeah. So. If the customer is not scared to fly, it's an easy travel. Awesome. Um, well, before we wrap up, there's there's two key questions I like to ask every guest. I'm, I'm curious um, your thoughts on these. So one being, what do you see changing in the millwork industry over the next five to 10 years? Well, I wish to have the, the crystal ball, but what I can see are... Uh, mainly two big divisions so there will be uh, one area that will specialize in minimal uh, fast moving and uh, fast replaceable furniture Mm -hmm. and uh, this is an orientation that becomes stronger and stronger and then otherwise that is going to be a very Craftsmanship is going to be reductive. I think it's going to be more into art. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's a piece of furniture will be like a unique piece. I see this kind of separation. While now we have different zones of gray in the middle, I think that moving forward, we're going to separate more and more. So there'll be further division of those things, more a more bespoke focused. Yeah. Uh, division and then a more minimal mass manufacturer focused that's division. That's correct. This is product wise. Awesome. Yeah. So a little bit more like Europe here in the US, would you say? Yeah. As I, one one facet? I think that's the way. One of the, uh, let's say, new changes that made me also th- think that is about uh, the, the difference between. Uh, uh, framed cabinet and frameless cabinet. Mm-hmm. Right. So in Europe, uh, framed cabinet, I think I've never seen those. While in the US is pretty common. Yeah. And uh, now we're seeing that top players are moving into frameless cabinet. Yeah. That definitely they are less forgiven talking about uh, precision. So there is nothing right. that can hide if the cabinet is not precise like usually the frame covers some unsquared panels or or rough edges when you go frameless uh, everything is there it's minimalistic it's fast to produce but you need good machines and you need to be really precise and the designer must be really really good yeah a lot more engineering and upfront design yeah program it and then well, on on the opposite side, the flip side, what do you see staying the same or remaining constant? Well, the fantasy of the customer, <laughs> their flavor. <laughs> yeah, I think that 
uh, with so many customers, especially in the US, uh, there will be space for everyone. And uh, of course, with different volume in different areas, but uh, I mean, everyone likes something different and uh, trying to be different from the other one. So I'm sure that uh, there would be a lot of uh, flexibility required by by some customers. So mass customization for the top players, and of course, uh, who already does bespoke, uh, uh, maybe can uh, widen their customer base being a little bit more flexible and trying to move on in something that is not just artistic or uh, a one piece uh, a unique piece uh, furniture great awesome well uh, um, I really appreciate you taking time out to share with us if people are interested in finding out more about Fairwood or, or reaching out to to see more information from you, what's the best way for them to do? Well, they can contact uh, us through the website, which is uh, uh, fairwoodgroup.com. Uh, they can find me on LinkedIn, and uh, I suggest them to look at my reviews, actually, the reviews that uh, the customer I work with, they released for me. So to have an idea about uh, the company, the person, and uh, what we can do for them. Awesome. I'll make sure to link those in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, you should be able to go um, click the link to the website uh, and get those LinkedIn. Um, Appreciate it. Um, perfect. Well, thank you again for sharing what you guys do. It's really interesting to me um, that we have options. And I don't think many, everybody knows that there are options like Furwood out there, that have the customer service, the white glove service that you guys do to get um, used machinery and, and refurbished machinery. So I'm excited to share that with everybody and, and hope more people are able to contact you from this. Yeah, thank you very much, Jacob. If you uh, allow me just a, a quick comment that uh, may help our customer when they're looking to dispose yeah. of their machines is mm -hmm. first of all, do not wait the last moment because uh, when you need to disconnect the machine, the value drop immediately. So as you are planning to dispose of it or you're planning to replace it with a new one, mm -hmm. inform uh, possibly us at an earlier stage because we can try to maximize uh, the value of your equipment. At the end, when it's too late, uh, you are disconnecting it. The moment you take out the electricity, the value drops. So call oh, us earlier. So yeah, if, if you are running the machine before you disconnect it, start reach out and start making plans about selling it because that's when the value is the highest. Absolutely. And of course, uh, you, you are in a hurry to, to take it out of the building. And I mean, by any reason, yeah. the value decrease. So think about it on time and uh, this would be beneficial for you guys mainly. Great advice. That's awesome. Thank you again, Diego, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you soon at the next conference. Absolutely. Pleasure. Thank you for having me here, Jacob. All the best. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Do you want to stay up to date about industry insights, new content, and our community of mill workers? Go to duckworksmw.com to sign up for our newsletter. I'll see you in the next episode of Verify in Field.